and this video is about using QuickBooks Enterprise to create user permissions or user restrictions. Again, this is only for QuickBooks Enterprise. So what I'm going to show you is not available in QuickBooks Pro, Premier, or Accountant. Uh, it's not, not available in Mac and not available in QuickBooks Online. Again, these options are only available in QuickBooks Enterprise. Anyway, uh, to set up users in QuickBooks Enterprise, so multiple users, so you can have some people do certain things in QuickBooks and some people not do certain things in QuickBooks. Basically, you have to log in as admin. That's the most important thing. So when you first uh, log into QuickBooks and you open uh, the QuickBooks file, you have to log in as admin. So make sure that you're logged in as admin. Only the admin can change, use, change or create user permissions. So once you log in as admin, you go to the company menu, then you click on users, and then we click on set up users and roles. Now here in the users and roles window, we have a couple of options here. One, I can create a new user, so I can click on new, and then I'll create a new user here. We'll call him Steve, and then I'll put a password, one, two, three, one, two, three. Once the user is created, right here in the bottom, it's going to ask me, what is the role? The role, uh, in this case, these are predetermined roles that, um, that, are, that are by default in QuickBooks to have access and restrictions to certain areas. For example, I'm going to give uh, Steve access to banking. So I'm going to give banking and click on add. I'm also going to give him access, let's say, to sales and we click on add. So right now we gave Steve the, the two predetermined permissions called banking and sales. So we'll click okay. Now once the roles are assigned down here, we can click on view permissions. And once we click on view permissions, we're actually going to select which user we want to see the permissions for. And then we can click on display. And then we're going to get a list and which we can print, which is great. So we can click on print up here and we can print it if we want to review it um, in a printed format. We can go down here and see what access does Steve have. So in this case, if you look at banking and everything under banking, um, it says full, 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 full. That means that they have full access to banking. If you scroll down, you go up here to accounting, notice it has, it has no accounting uh, access. We go down to centers, for example, it's got full access to your customer center and it has view only access to vendors. As we scroll down and we look at, for example, under customers and receivables, notice that some of these non, 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 I don't have, doesn't have access to any of these things, but it does have access to credit memos, full access, estimates, full access, invoice, full access. So this is basically the, all the different user permissions and areas in which we can com configure for each user. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit and close and I hit cancel here. So these are the predetermined user permissions. Okay. If you actually click on view permissions and I click on role, so instead of clicking on user, I click on role, I can actually select all of these here. So I want to compare, let's say I want to compare all of the roles here and click on display. Now I get a different type of report. I get a report that actually tells me uh, role by role what access do they have. So if you notice, account, let me just scroll down here to, for example, customers and receivables. This third one is the accounts receivable role. When I, when I scroll down the accounts receivable role, it's probably going to have full access. Notice all these full, 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 full access to all the customer related transactions, right? But for example, the accounts payable role in this here, it would have no access to customer related transactions as you can see here none 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 so that's how the predetermined role works however sometimes we want to customize a role so we can click on the role list and then we can create our own role so i'm going to click here on new and i'm going to call this our front desk clerk so we actually create roles that could be used for multiple employees. So here in the description, I can put Steve and Hector, right? These are the two people that are, are going to have this role. So in here, I can actually go area by area and activity by activity 
and tell it what information they would have. So for example, let's say that the front desk clerk, the only thing they can do is they can go into the customer center and they can, let's say, they'll have a partial access and they can view the list. They can't create new customers. They can modify customers. They can delete customers. They cannot print uh, the list and they cannot view the balances. Now, let's say that they can view the balances. That's okay. Then we're going to go down to customers and receivables. And let's say that we're going to give them access to seeing invoices. So I'm going to give a partial access and let's say they can view invoices and they can print invoices, but they can't, they can't create, they can't modify, they can't delete it. Let's say that we can do statements. Okay. So we'll click here on full. That means that they will have access to, um, to looking at, uh, to, to printing statements for the customers payments. Let's say that we're going to give them partial access to payments so they can view the payments. So let's scroll up here to banking. And let's say for example, that they can, they can look at deposits, right? but they can't see registers. So we're not going to give them any access to registers. They cannot see registers, but they can look at deposits. They will have no access to checks, uh, no access to registers, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then there's my role. Now, I have to make sure that each of my users has that role assigned to them that I cannot do from this screen. I have to go back to user list, click on Steve, and then I'm going to click on edit. And then I'm going to remove the current roles that are in there, right? The banking and the sales that we did as an example. And we're going to scroll down and look for the front desk custom role that we created. We're going to go ahead and hit add. And then it tells you right there, that's the role that, that, um, that Steve has. And then I can click on view permissions and I can then select Steve, hit display. Now I can you know, print or see the list of all the current permissions that it has. Now, something really interesting about this particular screen, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here. Um, I'm gonna zoom this in. When I scroll all the way down, you're going to see a legend here in the bottom that says V is for view, C is for create, M is for modify, D is for delete, etc., etc. So whenever I have specific permissions that I only gave it a couple of partial permissions, like for example, for invoices, we gave it V and P, and if I go down here, it says uh, print and view, right? That's what that's what that VB is. So now I can see that they have access to viewing and printing. Uh, and then and some of them will say the full word view. But whenever I have a partial access like this one, for example, see, I got view and, and view balance. So that's what the V and VB is. So I can view and view balance. So I'm going to go ahead and hit on close. I'm going to hit cancel here, hit close. I'm going to log out. And then I'm going to log in as Steve just to kind of show you um, what that experience would look like from Steve's per, uh, perspective. So I'm going to log in as Steve here, put the, Steve's password. Okay. And then, you know, the front page, the, the home page could look the same. However, remember, Steve can do invoices. So if I click on invoice here, Steve can access that. So the minute I go in there, I, I can go into this module. Now you see all this area that's grayed out. That's letting you know that there that there is a partial permission into it. That means that I can't touch them or I can't modify them. If I click on the previous button here, I can cycle through all my invoices and I can just go through all my invoices here so I can see multiple invoices that are out there. Okay, so I guess it's a bunch of invoices with different things. And here in the invoice, um, I can I can actually select any of these. I can copy and paste. But if I try to change something, right, like adding a um, a description or maybe changing quantity, whatever. If I try to do that and I'm, I hit save and close, I hit yes. It tells me that you need modify access. Make sure your administrator gives you that. So basically with Steve, he can look at invoices, but he can't uh, modify them. Now it looks like he can print them. Yes, there's a uh, print permission. So that's perfect. Okay, so you won't have issues printing them, but you can't modify them. So that's just an example. Another example is, let's say I didn't give Steve any permissions to do sales orders. So when I click on sales order, I get the error saying, nope, you can't view sales orders. Or if I try to do a purchase order, it says, nope, you can't do purchase orders. If I go to my customer center and I go to customer center here, you see, I have full access to viewing the customer, the customer center. If I try to, let's say, for example, change the name of a customer, I can't because I don't have modify access. Okay. Uh, if I try to create a new customer, I, I can't because I don't have 
create access, okay? If I try to print my customer list, okay, I can't. I don't have <laughs> access to printing that. So that's kind of the interesting piece. Now here on the balance total, if I if I had taken away that permission, then they, they wouldn't be able to see that balance. So I'll give you an example on that. So I'm going to uh, change back to admin. So switch back to the admin user and then I'm going to re remove the ability for Steve to be able to see balances in the customer center. So I'm going to go into company, users, set up users and roles. Whoops. Let me log out. I have to log in as admin. I guess I didn't do that part. So let me log back in as admin. Okay, I don't have a password for admin at the moment, but I should. <laughs> All right, so let me go into company, users, set up users and roles, go to Steve's role, which is called front desk clerk, click on edit, and then we'll go down into customers and receivables. No, not that one, centers. Click on customer center, and then I'm gonna take out view balance. Okay, and I'm going to go to create entries so Steve will now be able to create a new customer. So just to show you what that looks like. So again, I edit the role, not the user. Right? It's the role itself where the permissions are. That's a lot of area of confusion there. People try to add, add or change permissions to a user. It's not the user that we modify. It's the role itself. Um, and then the role is assigned to the user. Okay, so I'm logging in as Steve again. And then I'm going to go into the customer center. So I'm going to click on customers, customer center. Notice that I can't see the balances anymore. Okay. Now, because I can see uh, transactions and I go here into uh, balance details, I can see invoices. See that? I can see invoice because I have access to that. But if I go here, for example, into estimates, I don't have access to estimates. Or if I go into uh, sales orders, I don't have access to sales orders. However, since I do have access to invoices, technically I could see the balance in here, but I can't see it in here. So that's an interesting area where um, you may wanna think about that. Now before um, we had limited the ability for Steve to create new customers. Now that I added the ability, I can create a customer here, no problem, right? So that's kind of uh, how the user permissions work. Another area where people ask a lot about uh, user permissions, it's on uh, item pricing. It's probably one of the most common questions that I have is, you know, how, what, what kind of restrictions I have around the user being able to change the prices of the items. So I'm going to show you that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back into uh, Steve's role here for a second. So this was called the uh, front desk clerk, and then I hit on edit. And then I'm going to go into customers and receivables, go to invoice, and I'm going to give full access to invoices because I'm going to show you an exercise here with invoices. And then I'm going to go down here into lists, and I'm going to go into our item list. So I'm going to give, um, in this case, I'm going to give him uh, partial access to the item list. So he can, in this case, create items, but it can't modify existing items. Right? That's a really important piece. Um, it can modify existing items. That way I can't change the, the permanent price of an item. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Hit close. I'm going to log out and log back in into uh, QuickBooks under Steve's restricted role. So I'll put uh, Steve here and the password. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and create an invoice here. Okay. So I'm going to go into create invoice. And then I'll select a random customer here. And then I'm going to put an item code here. So I'm going to select an item code. Whichever item code I have, I'll put that there. And then there's the price. Now, in the invoice itself, um, there's no restrictions on the price that can be put. So, so I can sell this for 4000 or I can sell it uh, for $2. Okay? There's no restriction on me modifying the price in the invoice itself. Um, however, um, whenever I go into my item list, okay, Steve has access to being able to see all these items. But if I try to double click on any of them, I can't go in there or right click or edit and I can't change its 
its actual uh, default cost. So whatever default cost that shows up, that I cannot change. However, when I do create an invoice, I can overwrite, and unfortunately, there's no way for us to restrict this in QuickBooks. We can overwrite this to whatever price we want. So that's a really um, interesting area that uh, that, uh, that uh, a criticism itself of QuickBooks Enterprise that I cannot stop the user from changing the price. Um, however, I could do interesting things like I could change the, the layout um, of the template um, to restrict the person from me being able to, to see that column. That way, uh, Steve, in this case, can only see the final price and cannot change the individual price. That's one mini workaround. The other one that's interesting is uh, the price level list. So in this case, you know, we have price level list here, which he doesn't have access to, but the price level list is configured. So whenever he's going to sell a product, he can actually choose from these three here. So we can, he could choose um, a 25% discount or a 30 percent 35% discount that way he doesn't have to be sort of tempted to change the price itself and he's got his choices based on different price levels but we cannot restrict the user from being able to modify a price inside of an invoice although we were able to restrict the user from changing the price in the item list. so this is just an example of the interesting things that you can do and you cannot do with uh, QuickBooks Enterprise user permissions.